Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and I hope you all are doing well. This is a follow up video to my last water effect tutorial. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can find the link in the description below. In this tutorial, I will be walking you through the steps to create an ocean animation using Blender 3D. We will begin by setting up the ocean simulation, then followed by creating a custom tone shader to make it fit better for animation. So sit back and enjoy the video. As you can see here, I have just created a new blend file. We can go ahead and remove the point light as we won't be using it. Now, let's add the ocean modifier to the default cube by going to the modifier tab under physics, ocean. The ocean doesn't look interesting at the moment, but we can tweak a few settings to make it look better. Go to the waves section and adjust the scale value. This option controls the size of the wave. Let's increase it slightly to 1.1. We can also adjust the choppiness value for sharper wave edges, but for now, I will leave it as it is. Next, we will add more details to the ocean by setting the viewport and render resolution to 16. To animate the ocean, we could keyframe the time value manually, but let's automate the animation by entering the following value in the time option. Hashtag frame divide by 20. I find that dividing by 20 gives a nice smooth speed for animation. You can always experiment with different values to find the speed that works best for your animation. Right now, the ocean animation looks like it's in the middle of the ocean. To make it appear more like it's closer to the shoreline, increase the alignment value. The direction of the wave can be changed by adjusting the direction option. Now that we have a simple ocean animation, let's set up a shadow for it. Before we start creating the shader for the ocean, make sure we are using standard for view transform under color management. Using standard view transform is better in this case as we are aiming for a more stylized look. Next, go to the shader editor and change the shader type from object to world. Adjust the background color to a very light bluish hue as we are aiming for a bright summer look for the ocean. Then, add a new sunlight to the scene and rotate it slightly so the cast shadow looks more interesting. Back in the shadow editor, change the shadow type to object. Let's adjust the material for the ocean. To achieve a more stylized look, we'll use the color ram node to control the color of the ocean. So, let's add a shadow to RGB node, a color ram node, and a diffuse BSDF node to the setup. Connect the default principal BSDF node to the shader to RGB node. Then, connect the shader to RGB colors output to the color RAM node. Lastly, connect the color RAM node to the diffuse BSDF node. And the diffuse BSDF node to material output. I find that connecting the color RAM node directly to the material output works also. But I'm not sure what the difference is. If you know the answer, Feel free to share in the comments. Now, we will customize the color ram for the ocean. Since I'm creating a summer ocean scene, I will set the color ram to the following colors. A deeper blue for the main body of the ocean, and light blue for the brighter area. Also, please note that I'm using a smooth interpolation in the color ram node to allow more gradual transitions between colors, which will enhance the stylized painterly look of the ocean. We can further enhance the look of this ocean by utilizing the foam and spray attributes. Enable both foam and spray options in the ocean modifier settings. Then, give them a name in the data layers option. We'll just use foam and spray in this case. 
Also adjust the coverage value to about 0.3. The form option can be used in the shadow setup to add more detail to the ocean surface. Let's go back to the shadow editor and add an attribute node and a color ramp node. Connect the attribute node to the color ramp node and enter the form name we set earlier in the name option. You can now preview the form data if you connect this color ramp node directly to the material output. Next, change the color ramp node's interpolation mode to constant. Adjust the color ramp so that the brightest part only appears on the peak of the waves. Next, combine both color ramp nodes using a mixed color node. Remember to change the blend mode to screen as well. Let's use the spray attribute next to further enhance our ocean modifier. The spray data layer can be used to distribute 3D models on the ocean surface. In this case, we will use a low poly sphere. With the ocean selected, go to the geometry node editor and add a new geometry node. Then, add the following nodes to the setup. Distribute points on faces, instant on points, and join geometry. Connect group input to distribute points on faces mesh input. Then, connect distribute points on faces points output to instant on points points input. Next, connect the instant on points output to the join geometry node. And group input to join geometry node. Finally, connect the join geometry node to the group output. Now we can add a UV sphere node and connect it to the instant on points instant input. This will spawn UV sphere on the ocean surface. Let's reduce the sphere radius and resolution to make them look more like small particles. The spheres are currently distributed uniformly on the ocean surface. Let's distribute them according to the points created by the spray data layer. First, add a name attribute node and select the spray layer. Next, add a color ramp node and a math node. Change the math node to multiply as well. Connect the name attribute node's attribute output to the color ramp node. Then, connect the color ramp's node color's output to the math node first value input. Connect math node to distribute point on faces node density input. We can now adjust the color ramp to control where the spheres should appear. We can also change the number of spheres by adjusting the value in the math node. Right now, all the spheres look a bit dull because they don't have any material assigned yet. Let's quickly create a simple animation material. Add the set material node between the UV sphere and the instant on points node. And choose the material that we created earlier. We can also add a bit of radiation to the spheres by using the random value node. In this case, I will randomize the scale and rotation for the spheres instance. After I recorded the video on using the spray attribute, I realized I might have done it wrong in my case, although it still seems to be working fine. So let's quickly make some adjustment to the node setup. First, add a set position node and place it between the instant on spoil node and the join geometry node. Next, duplicate the name attribute and color ramp nodes. 
and connect them to the set position nodes of set input. Then, change the first name attribute from spray to form. This setup allows the form attribute to control where the instance should spawn, while the spray attribute will control the offset of the instance. So, do you think the difference between these two node setup is noticeable? Let me know in the comments. The method you have learned in this video can be applied to a wide variety of scenarios with some adjustments. For example, you can use a different color ramp for the ocean to depict various times of day or different moods. Use a warm color for a sunset scene, or dark cold color for a night scene. We can also use an emission node for the form shadow to make it glow at night scene. I wanted to take a moment to thank all of you for your continuous support. Your subscription means a lot to me and helps motivate me to keep creating content that I hope you enjoy. If you have any suggestion, feedback or just want to say hello, don't hesitate to leave a comment on the video. Your input is always valued. Until next time, take care.